to Agent Nation. I'm your host, Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. Oh, yo, where do I start, ladies and gentlemen? There is so much 2K20 news to get to. Before we do, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hey, drop a like. You don't have to if you don't want to, remember that. <laughs> I'm not making you do it, it's your choice. <laughs> Let's get into our first story of the day, which is some NBA 2K League drama, ladies and gentlemen. If you watch the NBA 2K League finals, you'll know there was some technical difficulties. Swante put out a tweet saying, lol, so apparently away teams always have an advantage and home teams is always delayed on land. Crying laughing emoji. And it's been like this all year. Each team on home got blew out. So you know when you choose home and away? If you chose the home team by the flip of the coin, unfortunately, your team was being delayed. My understanding was, during the regular season, if you were the home team, your point guard got delayed, and he couldn't momentum unless he had half of takeover ready. But apparently in the 2K League Finals, for whatever reason, it was way worse. Which is crazy, because they play on land. That should never be an issue. They should be playing with like five milliseconds ping in pure bliss, but unfortunately they weren't. So they ended up delaying the series and just trying to fix this problem before they continue. Demon JT, who's a, who I think he's on the Washington team, he replied saying, yeah, it's been like that all year, bro. It's a whole delay now. At first, it was just home PGs couldn't speed boost unless you filled up half your takeover bar. Now it's a whole delay to the home side for the whole team what and i can be all saying i complain about latency they delayed the finals because of latency ladies and gentlemen you heard it here first famous who's the manager of the heat check gaming put out a tweet saying whoever loses is gonna be upset at this point our game administrators have tested all 13 computers and in consultation with the players and management from both teams will resume play at 9 45 p.m eastern so they did end up resuming the games and i think things went better because I didn't hear any more complaints and yeah the Minnesota team won but the interesting part to me is like yo this is the finals and this is the NBA 2k league they should not be having issues like this I don't think I've ever in my history of watching esports ever seen an esport go through a problem quite like this and I watch a lot, do a lot of different games, some of the games I don't even play. Anyway, I thought it was an interesting story. Now, to get to the 2K20 juiciness. For our next story of the day, everybody's just going along about their day, and apparently, a wild Mike Wang appeared out of nowhere. And yo, when I tell you he was dropping all kinds of information, that would be an understatement. Mike Wang says on Twitter, this would probably take all day to delve into, but yeah, most of 2K19's badges are returning, but many of them were reworked to either be more balanced or more useful for different build types. Example, Limitless was changed to Range Extender to boost threes, but also deep twos. Uh, first of all, Range Extender is a terrible name, Mike Wang. We prefer Limitless Range, but whatever. It's just a name at the end of the day. Doesn't affect the gameplay. Sounds like a good improvement. Brother Jones hit up LD2K on Twitter, said this. Is there a reason you guys didn't mention that badges could be upgraded in park? Not talking about the neighborhood badges. LD2K responded saying, yup. Which likely means that unlike 2K19 and 18, we won't be able to grind for badges on the park? That last tweet was actually in reference to a post 2K put on Facebook. It was a gameplay blog and they were talking about a lot of the gameplay improvements they've made to NBA 2K20. Some of the key highlights include engine upgrades, which are always, always, always necessary. Makes the animations look realistic and juicy. They talked about improvements to handles and I don't know how the playmakers are gonna feel about that when the time comes, but there's some new badges that's gonna help those dribblers dribble and there's also some tools to help stop the dribblers from dribbling some of which they talked about here in this blog they also got a chance to talk about defense and how it was improved all right check this point out when it comes to defense when guarding the ball defensive players will see a small arrow under the ball handler indicating where they'll be leaning and attempting to go at first i was like no why would you do something like that but then i thought about it if you're a good dribbler you can use that information against them if you think i'm going this way i'm gonna pretend to go this way and juke you and then just go back this way. So it's really just a mind game at that point. And once you're playing really good people, I highly doubt you can even trust 
to use that arrow to let you know where people are going regardless. They also mentioned this year they captured hundreds of in-air collisions, hard fouls, grab blocks, and swats to let rim protectors have their presence felt. And probably one of the biggest highlights in this gameplay blog was when they were talking about working off ball. Apparently there's a whole lot of <coughs> off ball moves you can do now that actually makes getting open a skill in NBA 2K20, or so they're saying. Now, the only problem I have with all of this, and there was more juiciness, they talked about the AI, blah, 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 is if somebody is doing <laughs> and trying to get open like that, if I'm playing on 1 million millisecond ping, there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep up with them. What game was it? Was it 2K18 where there was a circle circle glitch where you can just set a screen and then boost back in the other direction? Do you remember how impossible that was to guard? So although this is a great gameplay addition, when you actually add it to the game, I don't know how practical it's gonna be because unless they improve the performance of the servers, some of these great gameplay additions can end up hurting the game, especially for the people with bad internet or that are just far away from a server. Besides the point, I'm curious to see how they're gonna implement all this goodness. The whole post itself was long. So if you wanna go through the whole thing and read everything, you can, but I, I gave you the juicy bits. You only really, really need the rest, all right? So let's get back to Twitter, cause I don't know what was good with Mike Wang. He must've got the green light. He was just spraying all kinds of juicy information everywhere. That was a weird thing to visualize. We tried to cut the badges that we felt nobody would ever want. Charge card is one of them. I was gonna debate you on this one because maybe on Pro Am, but you're right, it's wildly useless. That is the worst badge in 2K, bro. No cap. Free throws are back to being an attribute that you can upgrade. Free throw ace is gone. Hallelujah! I don't even know whose idea free throw ace was. So that's that's a W right there, I tell you that. I haven't seen any bigs have success spamming moves in development. Easy to rip, and they fumble a lot more. Big W. Somebody asked Mike Wang, is there a badge called first step badge? Mike Wang responded, yes, called quick first step. Now, if I know better, Mike Wang, I'd say this guy is an op. How on earth do you just guess a random new badge by the fucking name? That guy's an op and I guarantee you it's a burner account from Mike Wang. It has to be. There's no other explanation for how you could just guess a brand new badge. I don't know. But there is a quick first step badge. Some people were a little worried when they heard that because when you think quick first step, you might think blow by animation. But I think this is a little bit different. Quick first step is like when you're coming off a triple threat, boom. I think it's just the acceleration coming off triple threat. The actual act of a blow by animation is a contact. It's once you reach your defender, you blow by the defender. Those animations, we don't wanna see in 2K20. They did a really good job with that in 2K19, just copy and paste when it comes to that. But this could be a very good addition, first quick step badge. I'd be surprised if playmakers and slashers didn't have access to a badge like that. Mike Wang also mentioned that the infamous interceptor badge has returned to NBA 2K20. I actually used to like this badge back, I think it was like in 2K16 Pro-Am when they used to have it. We have a deep fades badge that helps you hit post fades from further out. Yo, okay, so this is what we gotta talk about. A lot of people are worried because post scorers was just dropping everybody off this year and nobody wants them to get better. So when they hear about any sort of improvement to post scorers, everybody freaks out, but stop. Yo, for the life of me throughout the history of NBA 2K since they've done this my player, my career stuff, I've been trying to look for a player that can hit <laughs> from the high post fade, like my favorite player of all time, Kobe Bryant, or like Michael Jordan. And there's no archetype that can do that. We're hearing for the first time there might be an archetype that can actually hit from the high post. This is money news right here. Now, I hope it's not OP. Obviously we need balance, but I'm all for this badge right here. Previously, the closest we got was in 2K17. When, if you if you made a sharpshooter in 2K17, you can get your post scoring up to like a 77. And cause you have limitless range, you can fade from a little further away. But it wasn't, it wasn't Kobe. You know what I mean? It wasn't Kobe and I wanted to be Kobe. So I like this news. A lot of people are scared by it, but I like it. So Mike Wang is here dishing out all this info. I said, I wanted to get in on some of this, right? So I sent out a message. I said, any other badges making a return from previous 2Ks? Post fade, question mark? He responded saying, here's one for you, Agent Beamstar. He spelt that incorrectly, by the way. Smaller players can equip Giant Slayer and it will help them score at the rim amongst trees. So finally, we're getting tools for smaller players to attack the rim without 
getting swatted every single time. The biggest advantage you could have gave yourself in the last two or three previous 2Ks was height. If you had that, didn't really matter what your attributes and badges were all that much. You were shooting on top of people. You were dunking over people, grabbing rebounds over people. So it was just the meta. So it's interesting to see we might be getting some balance this year. I like that. Volume Shooter is also back, but with better logic. Boosts your rating, and if you can maintain your field goal attempts per minute. And this is the worst news we could have heard, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not a bad idea, but for anybody who's been playing 2K and remembers 2K16, Volume Shooter was the worst badge in the history of NBA 2K. Once you got it on your character, it was time to delete your character. I even put out this tweet. This was the worst badge in NBA 2K history, and damn near everybody agrees with me, man. Brother Jones said, LMAO, you had to start the player over if you got that. <laughs> but LD2K even responded to some of the folks in the replies to my original tweet saying, fret not, my friend, fret not. So apparently it is gonna have better logic. It only really shares the name with the badge that gave us so many nightmares in the past. So this is when things start getting juicy because shot contest was a big issue in NBA 2K19 and everybody was giving their two cents. Mike Wang began to talk about it. We're always trying to improve the logic for shot contests and add more tools to be able to tune different aspects of it for different modes. And being able to see the percentage of a contest rather than the generalized text should help gamers understand the system better, which is a huge W. So instead of seeing lightly contested or heavily contested, you'll know exactly what percent you were contested, which is a way better way of telling the quality of a shot, right? Because if you're on the brink of heavily contested, but it's lightly contested and you miss, you might get mad. But come to find out, you just took a terrible shot. You need to get better at the game, my guy. Slippery off-ball badge gives you more success with new off-ball juke moves and get open. Stuff I blogged about also helps you get free from defenders who try and jam you up. Jers the Curse did a fantastic job on the off-ball upgrade. Now, Jers the Curse. I hope at some point during your fantastic development period, you took into account that your game has horrible servers and the performance is horrible. And so it might be difficult for a man to keep up. There are a lot of new defensive badges, clamps for perimeter locks, and post-move lockdown for paint defenders, to name a couple. As a blanket statement, we pretty much retooled every badge, so I'd advise going into 2K20 looking at badges as a clean slate. Many OP badges were heavily nerfed, and we'll be doing a lot more badge updates post-ship to continue balancing. And that's what I wanted to hear. In 2K19, it almost felt like they gave up on the game, right? For whatever reason, it felt like the meta of the game was horrible. Lockdowns and rim protectors everywhere, but they didn't do anything. There's no development team that doesn't do anything. I get that if they're working on other things like 2K20 at the time, whatever. Somebody has to stick around, hire more people. Somebody has to stick around to, to monitor the development of the game. When the meta changes, it has to be fun to play. What the f what kind of game doesn't do that? So uh, that's good to hear that they're not just gonna abandon it if the meta sucks. Are the green release animations only seen by players or by everyone? Which is, by the way, a very suspect question to ask. Mike Wang responded to that though saying, everyone, no more lying about fake greens. So an interesting point to note, if you turn off your shot meter and you can't see your shot meter on your screen, your team can no longer see your shot meter either. So they just see what you see. And so if we're going by that, ladies and gentlemen, the people lying about their greens could just turn off their shot meter and continue lying. But I do love this feature. I've been asking for it in the 2K League for a while and it's dope is coming to the regular game. Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm seeing the changes, finally. Are you guys bringing back post hook specialist? Yeah, it's called deep hooks. It's the Kareem badge. Ankle breaker is still the main badge for more effective step back dribble moves. New badge called Space Creator for more effective step back jumpers. There are always new animations added. A few rebounding badges like Rebound Chaser helps chase down long rebounds. Worm helps get around box outs and box makes it tougher for worms. <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie to you. They, it seems like they have added a lot of badges and they've disposed of the horrible ones. And I'm liking what I'm hearing. I'm not gonna, it's getting me hype, man. Oh my God, it's about time. Handles for Days badge allows you to pull off more dribble combos before getting fatigued. So let's kind of run through the rest of these pretty quickly, because I'm telling you there was a lot. They added an ability to pass the ball in the middle of a dive, so you don't have to fully wait for the animation. Mike Wang also mentioned he's gonna be a lot more strict with shot timing this year. 
which is interesting. 2K hasn't really talked about a skills gap this year the way they do every year. They talk about how skills matter, and this year, if you're a good player, it's gonna show. But this year, we're seeing some improvements, or maybe even just changes, that might add up to a skills gap. In this tweet, Mike Wang talks about how if you have poor timing, they're gonna be a lot more strict, you're gonna see a lot more bricks. Pick and Roll Maestro was replaced by Needle Threader, which does a similar thing, but extends to other passing situations, not just limited to pick and roll situations. And Mike Wang kind of finished off the little bow with all his NBA 2K20 news with this tweet. On a scale of zero to 100, zero being no defense and 100 being completely smothered, at what point should green releases be locked out? It's a difficult question to answer because we really didn't have any context. Obviously badges, attributes, heights, like there's a lot of things that could potentially affect where you even are on this zero to 100 scale. But there was like thousands and thousands of people who left their replies. All right, it's been a while since I've said this, for our next story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie 2K was on a stream, and somebody clipped this moment from his stream of him saying, this, roll it. More tools for them. Lockdown um, is gonna be a lot better improved. I mean, that was a, a tough build to play, a pure lock. All the defending builds, like, is there enough of a reason to play defenders in, in, in the neighborhood? Probably not. Um, so... No, 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 no. Stop! Stop it, Ronnie! Stop! I don't take Ronnie seriously because I think he's just saying things because he's on the stream and he's bored, all right? Lo you said the lockdown, you don't have enough reasons to use a lockdown. Aside from the fact that they're the best build in the game, they can shoot threes from anywhere, they will literally steal the ball from you every single possession, and you can't drive on them? There's not enough reasons, lo Ronnie 2K? Everybody has them. You're running against three lockdowns when you hop on the park. What are you talking about? So after I lost a lot of brain cells listening to Ronnie 2K spew that nonsense, I referred to some Mike Wang and Scott O'Gallagher tweets where they were talking about the balance to lockdown defenders, how they weren't gonna be as OP. Hey, whoever decided it was okay for them to have a silver corner specialist, stop it. I don't want you making any more meta decisions for the rest of, you're on a three year probation actually, all right? Cut it out. So honestly, I just think Ronnie gets asked a million questions on his stream and a lot of them he can't answer or he doesn't know if he can answer. So he just comes out with answers like this, but it's contradicting what Mike Wang and some of the other developers on Twitter are talking about when it came to the changes made to Lockdown Defenders. For our next story of the day, because Take-Two is a public company, remember Take-Two owns NBA 2K, NBA 2K is the publishers for visual concepts, those are the guys who develop the beautiful NBA 2K that we love. Because they're a public company, they have to release their earning and earnings reports. And every time they do, it makes news because yes, if you guessed it, NBA 2K19 was another career high. Per Take-Two's earnings, NBA 2K is now the best-selling game in franchise to date with nearly 12 million, 12 million units sold. Recurrent spending also grew by 140%. The cacophony of complaints about microtransactions didn't seem to affect the bottom line at all. <laughs> and the top tweet is a guy saying, yeah, my dumbass bought it four times. <laughs> Why are you buying the game four times? What are you thinking? I want you to realize just how crazy this is, by the way. First of all, Live is selling like 400,000 copies. So to be selling 12 million, wow, was that a blowout. Even if you just ignore any basketball comp competitors out there, that is an insane number for a sports title, insane. But the part that's even more impressive somehow is they more than doubled their recurrent spending. So all that VC you've been buying, they've more than doubled that. Well, I guess it helps that more people are buying the game, 12 million. And so it, the recurrent spending is gonna go up just because there's more people on the game. But also the people that are on the game already are spending even more on the game. That's what they're trying to say. Wow, I did not expect that, honestly. I thought maybe it would be a little higher than 18, but not as high, but this is just like. For our next story of the day, Charlie Intel put out a tweet saying, breaking, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo have agreed to a new initiative where publishers will have to disclose the odds of earning items from loot boxes from all games published on their systems going forward. If you guys remember like six, seven months ago, the FTC said they're gonna look into the loot box situation on video games. And obviously, the president of the United States is blaming video games for some shit that has 
has nothing to do with. So these companies are like, yo, why are we going to let the government regulate us? There's these publishers that are running amok, abusing some consumers, and we're just going to do something about it. That's all. So it seems as if Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo are trying to regulate gaming before the federal government has to regulate gaming the way that it did in the Netherlands. And that's a very good point. Usually when you gamble, at least you know what your odds are. But when you're doing this loot box stuff, you have no idea if your odds are amazing or if they're horrible. And that makes it even more riskier. So, I mean, this is so fascinating to me. I wonder where this can go, to be honest with you. For our next story of the day, this is the first time in the history of 2K drama lore where Agent Beamstar is gonna be reporting on Killer Keemstar, ladies and gentlemen, because he put out a very interesting tweet saying this. You sent private investigators to YouTubers' homes to intimidate them because of them talking about leaks? Borderlands, question marks. Have you all gone mad, question mark? To most people, they'd have been like, that's insane. But why is it worth talking about? Because I swear to God, I remember having a conversation with a couple people saying that 2K did the same thing to them years ago. Except they didn't say it was a private investigator. They said it was like an FBI guy, but maybe they were just bugging because somebody literally pulled up to their house. Now I'm telling you guys this right now, 2K takes leaks seriously, yo. They do not play around, man. And I've heard rumors of this. So now that I, heard, I saw Keemstar report on it, I was like, yo, that must have been true. They sent a person to a man's house. That's so crazy, man. Uh, so that's literally all there is to the story. Uh, I just thought that was fascinating. For our next story of the day, you know the WNBA is gonna be an NBA 2K20, right? But we haven't seen any of the overall reveals for the WNBA players. That is until now. Ronnie, uh, I think he was on Instagram or something, and he put out this post. Brianna, it's Ronnie 2K. We're missing you here out in New York. We just shot an awesome episode of The Boardroom. I wanted to let you know that your rating's at 95. Can't wait to hear your reaction. Now, I'm gonna keep it honest with you. I don't know who that is. And at first I was like, 95, what the? But then I was thinking to myself, they can't add WNBA players to the league. And then just give them like 40 overall ratings, that would defeat the purpose of even putting them in the game. They have to be fun to play with. Yeah, if you were wondering how the WNBA players are gonna be rated, is most likely on a relative scale to all other WNBA players. They're not using the same scale that they use for NBA players. I just thought that was interesting. For the next story, of the day, Mike Wang was like, hey, I haven't had enough. Y'all had enough of me? Mm-mm, not at all. He put out this tweet saying, I'm working on making the shot meter off option into a pro gamer setting. High risk reward, if you could hit the excellent window, huge shot percentage boost, but if you're a couple frames off, you'll most likely miss. I responded to that tweet saying, like the right stick boost in 2K17 could be interesting if done right. If you remember back in 2K17, they tried something similar where if you use the right stick and you angled it downwards perfectly and released it perfectly, you actually got a massive boost. So I made a video telling people about that boost and everybody and their parents began to shoot with the right stick until 2K deemed it as overpowered or broken and they completely removed the boost out of the game. And when they completely removed the boost, they didn't even tell us. I had to find out by getting destroyed in a couple games. And I was like, yo, what's good with the right stick today? Is it not working? And then we found out eventually that they removed the boost. So Mike Wang, if you do it correctly, I could shoot without a jump shot meter. Shout out to all the rhythm shooters out there. Um, it, it does have the potential to make the game more interesting, to add a layer to the game. But it could also go horribly wrong if you do it wrong, right? The only bad thing about this is that once I remove my shot meter because I want that boost, my team and the other team can no longer see my shot meter. So people can continue lying about greens. And it was one of the things I enjoyed so much. So uh, Mike Wang, it would be nice that if even if someone turned off their shot meter, the rest of the people in the game can also see what they're shooting like. That would be perfect. I agree, this could be interesting, Mike Wang, but please give us the option to have our shot feedback on. I wanna see how close I was to perfect or if I hit perfect when I'm taking some of these shots. Cause there's no way to continue to get better if your shot meter's off and you have no feedback. Scott O'Gallagher responded to Mike Wang's original tweet saying, I miss the days of no shot meter. Get in the lab and learn each player's shot. There was much enjoyment in that. Hashtag get off my loan. Crying facing emoji. I'm gonna keep it a bean with y'all. There was way more news, but there is no way I'm gonna cover in this video without the video being 50 hours long. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like. Hey, there's a drama alert playlist right there if you wanna watch more. Subscribe to the channel. Do whatever you wanna do. I'm not for, hey, remember, I'm not forcing you to do anything. It's all on you.
<laughs> I'm out. <laughs>